Hello, welcome to the Monday, December 30th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, last week I mentioned that we may do a webcast about the new Citrix vulnerability that affects like the Citrix slash Netscaler gateway devices. We decided to do one on Tuesday. So tomorrow on Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern, we will do this webcast to fill you in a little bit on this. And well, a link to the sign up page will be in the show notes again. So far, it looks uh, like uh, this may be a little bit slower than originally expected. There is no proof of concept exploit public yet, which probably is sort of holding back the flood of requests trying to exploit this. Haven't seen any sort of active exploitation of this vulnerability so far. While I'm talking about of these VPNs and perimeter security devices, Fox IT has an interesting report about some recent activity that they are calling Operation Wokao, or they're also associating this with a Chinese origin APT20. Now, this particular attack sort of was different in so far that the attacker got persistent access to a VPN that did require two-factor authentication. Of course, two-factor authentication is always mentioned as the solution to prevent someone from just stealing credentials. Apparently, what happened here was that the victim did use a soft token. Now, soft tokens come in different forms and shapes. For example, you can have them like on a mobile device, like a phone. In this case, the soft token was installed on the laptop, which made it particular vulnerable. Pretty much all it took was to copy that software, including the seed file that's being used to actually generate these tokens to a different system and the attacker was able to then create these uh, one-time passwords independently. Now, uh, the victim here used the RSA implementation of uh, these soft tokens. And typically, it's not that easy uh, to copy just the software to a different system. There's a little bit of... uh, copy protection built in here. And by a little bit, I mean very little bit. What happens is if you just simply copy the files for uh, this particular software to a different laptop, there will be a prompt that, well, it's running on a new laptop and it won't let you run it. But all you have to do is simply patch this check in the client. And uh, yes, the software works just fine and creates the tokens for you given the right seed file. So it's pretty much just like a lot of games and such uh, that try to do some simple copy protection where once you use a hex editor or such to simply edit uh, the routine that does the checking, well, you can just bypass it. And that's really the fundamental difference between soft tokens and hardware tokens. If you have one of those hardware tokens, well, uh, they cannot be copied. The RSA actually goes through quite a bit of pain to make it kind of difficult, even if the token is lost, to extract the secret from the token. With soft tokens, of course, in particular on uh, PCs, this tends to be pretty easy, unless, of course, the secret is properly protected, maybe within a secure enclave on some of the mobile devices or a TPM chip or something like that. Now, Fox IT points out that the attacker didn't necessarily have to actually copy the software because they had access to the victim's laptop. So they could just run the software on that laptop and uh, would possibly be able to obtain those numbers. Of course, that depends then on them maintaining persistent access to that laptop. And then in diaries, we got a couple interesting ones here from the weekend. First one by Manuel about enumerating Office 365 users. Well, it turns out that Office 365 will actually allow you to check if a particular account exists or doesn't exist with a simple unauthenticated HTTP request. All you have to look for is the X backend HTTP status header that's included in the response. Then DDA wrote about how his tool 
Oli Dump uh, can be used to actually uh, extract information from corrupt office documents. Now, they're not necessarily malicious, uh, but sometimes it happens that an office document gets corrupted, maybe it didn't get saved correctly and such. Office itself will no longer be able to open it, but with Oli Dump, you may be able to still salvage some of the data in particular, any visual basic macros that you may have running in this document. And finally, we got a diary from Guy. Guy has a very little write up here about how to use Elastic to actually visualize some of the PyHole logs. So, the usual Elk stack with Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana. You can write little dashboards that help you to gain more insight into your DNS queries. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.